Alright, welcome to Col de Tourmalet. Uh, we're looking up towards Peak de Midi. Uh, we're in the Pyrenees in France. We've just come down from uh, the Tourmalet and this is an example of a major flash flood that happened in June 2013 uh, when we had a period of very, very heavy rainfall in June coupled with snow melt of around about 10 metres um, that occurred just over one weekend. Uh, causing a huge surge of water down the valley and so you've got the confluence of the river from Tourmalet here and the river coming down from the uh, peaks above over there and you can see down in the valley where those both those rivers met you've got a huge amount of work going on to rebuild the bridges um, and there's another tributary that arrives further down there we're going to be heading down into uh, Gava um, Barrage, sorry, which is the town down there, to see what happened when all this water was funneled through a very, very narrow uh, river basin um, and the destruction that happened as a result. So, if I just zoom in so you can see what's going on down there, we're now okay, in so we've moved a bit further down now towards Barrage. There's yet another tributary that's just uh, entering the uh, main channel just there to the left hand side. Uh, you can probably see in the corner there there's still some works going on um, but pretty much you can see the power of the, the water as we get here the gradient is still pretty steep on this part of the channel so velocity was high and you can see the size of some of these boulders that, uh, that were moved down during the course of the flood event in June and the awesome power obviously they had I'll just turn around and face down again and again you can see where the and the banks there have been have been cut away and then on what became the outside bend of the channel there a huge amount of erosion that went on where the uh, velocity would have been the quickest and you can see trees in the bank having slipped down um, into the into the river channel itself so uh, again 
We're about two kilometres from the town of Barège. This water is uh, gaining in velocity. Uh, it's moving debris, huge debris like the boulders you can see down there, which are the size of, uh, which are the size of cars. Um, and it's going to be funneled through what essentially is quite a, a narrow channel through the town. Again, another tributary you can see just coming down from the mountain here it would be joining. So every, every tributary is increasing the amount of water in the river channel at this section. Okay, so we're just down on the outskirts of Barège and we're just looking down towards the town itself. The gradient of the river is still reasonably steep. You can see where the water was funneled through here. You've got the remnants of a, a bridge and some pretty large boulders as well in place. Okay, so we've just come down a little bit from where we were stood before. You can see there on this very small but outside of the bend where the river has been incredibly powerful but uh, you've had a huge amount of bank erosion taking place and there, there's a house and a gift shop there which has completely fallen into the into the river itself and if we keep moving a bit further down you'll see one of the holiday chalets again which has been completely undercut and the course is pretty much fallen into the into the river channel itself and is awaiting demolition at the moment. You can see just into the to the garage there that would have been evacuated. Um, and of course no one's allowed back into that now because it's incredibly incredibly unstable. Okay, so we're down to the river channel itself now, looking up and you can see the, the power of the erosion on there and see just how high the water level came up. You can see the size of some of the material here that was uh, brought down by the river, um, the boulders tons and tons of these boulders and again if you look up to where the, the bank slid away it give you an idea of just the, the force of the water coming down at this point and you can see there where even on the inside bend where the flow would be the weakest it's still taken meters and meters of what used to be people's back gardens. Looking down the downstream here we just stood on a, a new concrete bridge that's been constructed to allow the water to flow through to lessen the bottleneck at neck effect and again you can see these massive exposed boulders um, that must be twice the size of a car some of these that are there um, and again you can see on the outside of the bend there where the water's ripped into the bank you can see a water main over there which is still leaking and we're just looking down towards the town centre of Barrage itself uh, but the amount of debris that's been deposited in the channel is incredible and one of the jobs of the, the speed team that are, that are here to, to clear up if you like is going to be to clear this channel out and to free it up again. At the moment there's a huge number of uh, blockages in the channel. You might even see there if you look very carefully, uh, there's the bridge which is the bridge that used to stand where I am at the moment and it's been completely uh, washed downstream and then smashed up by the power of the water. So it's a pretty devastating picture and this is you know, a good few months after the event has happened uh, too. There's a view of the bridge that I was just stood on, speaking to you from just there with the pipes allowing the water to flow through and just a better view of the original bridge that used to be there, which is just there. You can see the, uh, 
metal railings which should have been used as protection have been completely ripped, bent um, and disformed showing you just how incredibly powerful this water was laden with all the boulders and such like that have come from it. You might see just down there the corner of a, a very old house, it's 150 years old. Uh, it's been demolished since because obviously the water's uh, power of the water has actually taken away the edge of that building and yet on the other side just here you've got buildings that are still intact um, and that luckily we're, we're just about saved. You might just see the remnants of what used to be the road leading just up here. You can see the, the drainage pipes coming from underneath it uh, and there's nothing of that left at the moment. They've had to construct a separate mud road around the back in front of that retainer wall just there. Okay, we've just moved a little bit south of the town centre, a little bit further downstream. You can still see we have a huge amount of debris in the channel here, uh, but to show you the impact that had on people who live next to the river, uh, I'm going to show you the house, this house here, which was a, a bed and breakfast. And as you can see, even though it was set at the time well above the river, um, the river overtopped its banks, uh, and with the power of the river and the boulders that it was carrying, the house has been all but destroyed. Amazingly, it is still standing, um, but it's awaiting demolition at the moment. The foundations have been completely undercut. Part of the house there on the left-hand side has, has fallen away, uh, and the garden surrounding it is, uh, is also completely gone. And you can see the level of erosion on the banks just behind it. It must have just been spectacular and very, very frightening at the time when this flood was taking place. Uh, their neighbours there didn't come off much better. Uh, the main part of the house is still standing, the bed and breakfast uh, to the right hand side there has completely collapsed into the, to the river itself and you can see the channel which originally ran under this bridge here is extended and this entire uh, area around on the floodplain here was completely exposed, completely inundated um, and again you can see a rather large block of flats, uh, this is used in the tourist season for skiing and the water has uh, broken uh, over the edge of the banks and flowed through the bottom of this block of flats. It looks like it's been reasonably unscathed, uh, but I'd imagine they'd be doing a variety of tests to test the structure of the building to make sure it is still safe after being battered by a huge amount of water uh, and debris as well. So, just to show you the human impact of this, uh, you can see uh, how it affected people in this area and how it's going to continue to affect the tourism trade, especially this coming winter uh, with your people who come to do their skiing and snowboarding in this part of the world.